Let's talk about the process and kind of how the process works. First of all, you have to acquire an image. Now, in the old days, old days, there were real artists who could draw on drawing uh, paper uh, with a pen, maybe color it in with marker, and they could give you a full color illustration. Those days, I think, are gone. Now, for those of you artists that do that, don't take that the wrong way, but now everybody does it on the computer, where the artist has a, a graphic tablet and can draw the image on the computer, can fill it in with color, and really build the image thinking about the fact that it's going to be color separated. In the old days, we inherited these images, and in the old days, uh, people had drum scanners, you know, $50,000, $200,000 scanners <laughs> for scanning the image. Now that's, that's kind of a thing of the past. Today, what people have is the image on their cell phone. They want to send you the image on their cell phone that they, that they got from Google Image, or maybe they took of the, of the band, and they want to send it to you that way. So you need to acquire the image, and acquiring the image today is certainly different than what it used to be in the old days. So somehow we have to acquire the image. Now, today, because everybody has computer graphics, everybody's a designer, and it gets even designers that are taught in school are taught about web graphics. They don't understand the resolutions, and then we need a little higher res image than the web graphic. They don't quite get that. So what you also inherit when you acquire an image today is that low-quality JPEG image that has got artifacts and little stuff around the edges and soft edges and just junk. We're going to spend a lot of time, a lot of time in this course covering how to improve the quality of low quality JPEGs. Because it is what it is. I do separations again all day long and you know when I get stuff from new customers who don't quite know the process they'll send me these you know 50 kilobyte files uh, and they're two inches big and they'll say, well, this worked for separating. And my response so often is just have you used the zoom tool, you just zoom in on this because this is what I see and this is what your separations are going to look like. They're going to be very jaggy, jagged and rough and all that. And so you inherit, you inherit the image and it is what it is because what happens is when I do SEPs is I'll come back to my customer and say, do you have a better, quali better copy of this? And the answer is almost always no. That's all the customer has what he has to work with. So your choice is then to walk from the job, maybe have someone rebuild it. That happens with me a lot where I have artist friends that I'll say, well, call this up. my artist friend. He'll rebuild this for you. I'll do the separations. So sometimes you end up totally backing away and saying, let's, let's do this, but let's have somebody rebuild this. Oh, I can't afford that. Well, you, then you're stuck with kind of working with a low-quality JPEG. You can build images in Adobe Illustrator or CorelDRAW. I'll bet a third of the images I get, maybe even half, were built in Adobe Illustrator or Corel Draw. And if you're thinking, well, those are vector programs, which we're going to talk about a little bit, uh, why we need to do any separation? Because we can just fill the image with spot colors in those programs. Typically, the, pro the images are built in those programs where the type and the, the, the borders and, and some of the hard edge graphics are vector elements, meaning that they were built in those programs with hard edge graphics. But then there's a photograph place. There's a, a logo or a picture of the band or a picture of the product. Or somebody did a, you know, a, a, a drawing for the event, the festival, the rod run, the picture of the car. And all of a sudden, you can build it in those programs, but you can't set that's why you're here. So we're going to talk about how we can build images in, in vector program but bring them into Photoshop to separate. I get that a lot from artists saying, well, I built it, and can you give me back the file as an Illustrator file in vectors? And my response is no. And uh, their response is, yeah, but I hate those pixels. Now, I coined a term a long time ago, and I think it's a term that, that is mine. I don't recall ever hearing anybody else say it. I call it vector snobs. A vector snob is an artist who has been taught that pixels are bad, and we don't want to use pixels on anything, and so vector snobs don't want to get things back in pixels. My response to them is walk into Walmart, walk into Macy's or any department store, anywhere you see full color images on shirts, on black shirts especially, those were, I guarantee you, those were separated in Photoshop as pixels, even though they may have been built in a vector program. So you need to acquire the image, then we're going to bring the image up into Photoshop, and we're going to start pulling out the colors. And Photoshop has a lot of tools that we can use that we can say, give me all the yellow, and we're going to create what's called channel separations. That's kind of where we're heading with this course, is how to build channel separations. The goal would be how to do a great underbase where it's going to be white under solid, under, under light colors of ink on a dark shirt, and less white under darker colors, especially if the shirt color is black, so we can let the shirt come through and the shirt give us the black of the image. And so we're going to be building the underbase first. Then we're going to use Photoshop to actually pull the colors out. We're going to say, okay, give me all the yellow in the image. Give me all the red. Give me all the green. 
and your dilemma is going to be, well, you can only print six colors, and your dilemma is going to be, how can I make this photorealistic image work with only six colors of ink? And one of them is probably going to be white for the base. Uh, but on a black shirt, you get black for free because you can usually use the black of the shirt on a black shirt uh, as black in the image. So I call that getting a color for free. So you're you're going to acquire the image. You're going to then try and do some gobbledygook that we're going to cover here to make that image a better quality image. We're going to then take it into Photoshop. Uh, we're going to start pulling out the colors, build the underbase, and try and adjust the file so that on the monitor, the image displays the way it's going to print. That's key. I occasionally get separations that were done by other people. Maybe they want me to look at them, or the customer either want to try and, and fix them. And I'm always surprised that they have not done the right settings in the separations to make them display correctly. Because you have to have it look correctly on the monitor. So we're going to cover all of that in this course too. And then, of course, then you have to output film and convert any areas that are gray levels into halftone dots, any areas that are solid into solid areas, of course. And we have to do some way of have some way of converting the file into half tone dots. That's kind of the overview of the entire process. Of course, then after you convert the file to half tone dots and print film, your job is going to be trying to hold those dots on the actual screen and have those dots print on the shirt, the half tone dots. And those of you that have taken my classes at the, at the trade shows or read my, my, my trade articles know that one of my mantras is hold those dots. That's going to be a big thing in this course is we can output the halftone dot on the film, but can we hold that dot on the screen? Can we hold that dot on the shirt? Because every little dot that's a halftone dot from the image is part of that image. It could be a highlight area. It could be a little shadowing area, a little subtle area that's there. And if you don't have the dot on the screen and the dot on the shirt, then that area is not going to look correctly. And if you look at the real high-end printers that are the award-winning printers in this industry, they have got every little tiny little what they call the highlight dot, all the little tiny little tiny halftone dots on that screen and on that shirt. That's kind of the process in a nutshell.